part 5, we will explore expanding the available job markets and creating new job markets to absorb a large number of aspirants. This must be a cardinal principle on which the government must work. Aadhaar and large-scale digitization will move markets increasingly to the formal fold, which must be welcomed and if need be legislated. Unfortunately, almost 90% of the employment is in the unorganized sector today. There is always a question of where the new jobs will come from. Current job markets are saturated. Hence, new markets must evolve. Innovative thinking will help. Let's explore some of such ideas. Creation of new cities to ease pressure on the existing ones is one such idea. It will boost the infrastructural initiatives leading to new job markets. Make in India indigenization of defense equipment through startup ventures will add to the job markets. There is also much to learn and worth emulating from the Australian model where a close synergy exists between TAFE, NSW and their national employment division. New projects like bidding for Asian Games or Olympics can be preceded with a detailed planning of the infrastructural requirements like stadia, roads, new housing complexes and support systems. Further planning helps in new skills required, employment potential for the locals to be estimated, capacity of existing community centers or skill institutions to be evaluated and the new skill centers approved in the districts, towns and villages that we have. This preempts any excess trained workers left unemployed apart from the gains of creating new cities. The skill paradigm needs to be planned intuitively to the last detail lest a skilled workforce is created who do not find jobs, causing a general degradation in the quality of future workforce. Friends, I have tried to paint the skill canvas for you. Yes, there are aberrations, incongruities and maybe even jarring tones. How do we overcome them? What is the way out? It's extremely necessary that the government creates a national skills university, NSU as I call it, as a central university anchored in MSDE with regional centers all over the country, preferably in each of the 748 districts as we move on. The NSU must affiliate all skill centers throughout the country through provisions in its act and must set standards for curriculum, create curriculum along with the NCVET. The sector skill councils must develop teaching pedagogies, learning methodologies, create evaluation systems in alignment with the NSU. The National Skills University along with the NSDC must conduct research in skills, both traditional and emerging. The state level skill universities in the country must be mandated to follow those standards. Skills only 
or skills and education through various certification levels with multiple pathways can easily be conducted under the provisions of the university and award of a degree or diploma would be legally tenable for those who wish to progress through higher education levels where higher certification levels are higher order skills in the same sector. Accumulation of credits further facilitate the skill seekers. This prevents disaggregation of skills, their delivery and meets national goals and would truly aid in India becoming the skills capital of the world. The National Skills University that I am proposing can create an enabling and facilitating regulatory environment under the Make in India blueprint. It can further work on developing technology, enhanced curriculum and content, conduct train the trainers programs with the sector skill councils, develop accreditation models for both trainers and trainees. How do we evaluate them? And evolve to seek Dublin and Sydney accords. The university can also create revenue models for sustainability, both from its own and the students' perspectives. As its external links, the NSU could plan collaborations with the SARC countries to promote skills and training for employment and plan collaborations with organizations like the American Association of Community Colleges or those in UK, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa and Germany based community colleges and their regulatory bodies. Placements could be aggregated through collaborations with the industry bodies. With other linked labor management information system, the country stands to gain in still unexplored ways. Such a national skills university set up as a society or a section 8 company preferably near an industrial zone and an airport may include infrastructure like office space, auditoriums, guest houses, training centers, hostels, model skill centers and research centers. It could collaborate with other institutions, corporates and business houses and others. The university could also aid in creating the training center supply chains in various sectors across the country. These supply chains would allow professional training centers to come up on the Jaguar model of the United Kingdom, notwithstanding the fact that new business opportunities and new revenue models would evolve. Above all, remember, GST evolved from a need for consolidation from multiplicity and education can be better off from that experience. Creation of a corpus with funding from state governments, the center and CSR initiatives of the industry, creation of bonds for possible soft loans, scholarships to fund the needy could all be very useful in the long run. Friends, I have tried to enumerate to you the skills paradigm and its dependence on some form of education. Truly, 
India can be the skills capital of the world if only the NSQF is implemented in letter and spirit. Like our honorable Prime Minister said, dignity of labor has to be our national duty. It has to be part of our nature. Let's all work for promoting the dignity of labor. I will end the skills story here for now with the promise that I'll be back next week for another session of the Saturday Wisdom. Namaskar, Dhanyavad, thank you.